right guys, welcome to the demo of the Suta LA25 Mark II. As you can see, I also have the Mark I sitting on top of that, and that's because I want to show you some comparisons between the two in terms of layouts, and there's also be some relabeling of functions as well, so that's you know good to get your head around what's what if you're planning on purchasing either of these amps. And there's a lot of functionality here to go through, so this will be a couple of minutes long. So if you just want to skip through to hear what the amp sounds like direct uh, it, outside the context of the intro song, just do that and come back to this later if it still interests you. And of course, read the manual if you're interested. There's everything on the website to you know, browse through and read up on. So let's check it out. All right, so let's dig into the difference, shall we? Apart from the, the stylistic differences, this is also more legible because each of the controls have its own writing, like channel 3, channel 2, treble, bass, etc. While this one doesn't have any of that, but you have to rely on the lit up uh, LED letters up here, which you saw in the demo, it corresponds to the controls that are being lit up are the ones being active for that channel. Here it's just, it's, it's more, you know, legible as well. So that's a, a nice feature. Uh, also, you see that up here you have a control called Vintage for channel 2 and 3. Down here that is called Plexi. And that I think is probably meant to further sort of exemplify what it actually does. It makes the amp sort of more into a Plexi style circuit. So the bright is still the bright. Uh, dynamic for channel 2 and 3 is now labeled Open. And I think that's sort of, um, you know, more explains that it's sort of a compressor kind of thing. But when this is deactivated, the, the amp is more compressed, saturated, sounds really good at lower volumes, you know, a little bit more gain. But if you press the open switch in, it opens up, it gets more headroom, and more dynamics. So um, it's sort of the reversed for this one. Dynamics sort of, you know, you think that, Okay, the standard thing is the open and then pressing it in activates sort of a compression circuit. This is sort of the reverse. The compressed thing is the normal and activating the open opens the amp up, raises the volume a little bit. So sort of, you know, mirror images of each other, I would say. Boost is the boost, same thing. Channel is the channel. Uh, standby over here. Of course, this done, one doesn't have a standby light. This one has the power light that glows blue when the amp is activated. When if you press the standby, it changes color to red. So that's really nice and very visible to see if is the amp on or not. Because if you rack mount it, you don't want to go on the back and you know trying to fiddle with you know stuff there. So let's check out the rest of the controls. And for that, I'm going to be turning the head of the Mark One around. So first off, uh, on the back here, we have this. Uh, virtual mic, which is the same as here. Difference here, of course, the virtual mic output is here. It's also on the back on the Mark II. We'll turn it around later for you, you can see. But the controls for it is on the front, so it's easier to access when this is in a rack. Uh, the EQ corresponds to the voice. It's basically a, a mid hump kind of thing going in if you activate it. And then the position and axis has changed name to distance and angle, which I think makes a little bit more sense when you think in studio terms. The position, the, you know, the distance of the mic, the distance from the center of the speaker towards the edge of the speaker, and the angle, the angle of the uh, microphone placed on that speaker, rather than axis, might not be a term everyone is familiar with, uh, apart from axis, Boleslav Henriks, maybe. Uh, and then you have the FX and FX return is here, return level FX loop. So you have uh, that activated here on and off and then just the current level, which you have then on and off here and return level there. Uh, then you have a DI FX. And what is that? Well, the amp has two loops, basically. You could put things in the loop as regular between the preamp and the power amp, but you can also put pedals before the preamp, so like compressors, boosts, overdrives. Let's say you have this rack mounted and you want to have a couple of pedals on the board or something like that that goes in front of the amp. Then you could 
have them patched in there permanently. So that's a, a cool thing also if you're using the live rack, you can have that on like a drag out board, you can have pedals patched in there, but you won't actually have to, you know, have them through the input and then have all, everything on a separate board and stuff like that. And then this amp also has a, a reamping circuit. That's why it sets line in here. It's a combo jack. It's both a telejack and an XLR jack and a ground lift. Uh, so, so you see instrument and line in. So there's a separate circuit in this amp with a separate transformer specifically dedicated to re reamping. So you can run in here and you get a DI out on the back that you can record at the same time as you record the amp normally and then just have the DI signal in your DAW and then reamp that later back into the amp or whatever you want to do with that DI signal. So really clever thing. So let's turn this one around and check out the back of that as well. All right, so here on the back, we have that virtual mic out, the cab sim, the speakers out. Then you have a line output, a slave, if you may, uh, that I use uh, to go, you know, because this amp has its own reactive load built in, you can use it without the cab if you want. And you could just go through the line out into a your DAW or a fractal as I use or something similar to that and add your cab sims there, your IRs there as well and get the whole amp in a signal with the power amp and such. You have the standard FX loop, then you have your pre-i-di FX insert which then you use a loop out like a, a TRS kind of split and put your pedals there that goes in front of the preamp. And you had the DI mic out, and this is then used then for the reamping, so you get a DI signal constantly here going out. So you can you have that on, regardless of what you do with the rest of the amp, you have that DI signal going out there. And you have the foot switch, just as on the Mark One as well. All right, so that's all about the features of the amp. Now it's time for me to stop yapping and go into some actual sounds and well, you know going through the channels of the amp and such. So stay tuned. All right, let's dive into some sounds then, shall we? Uh, we'll start out with the clean channel uh, on the amp. And as you can see, that clean channel has only the bass and the treble. These two, bass and treble over here. And as you can see, there's also global presence. And you can see the global presence light up, the volume, bass, treble, and gain light up. So those correspond to the active controls for this particular channel. You might react to the treble being a little low, but that's because I also have the bright switch engaged as well on this. So let's start out just with the tones that I used on the actual uh, intro song. So I'm routing it through my uh, fractal and adding reverbs and delays in there. So this is what that sounds like. <laughs> Very lush, open, stringy. Now, if I deactivate the reverb and the delay, and I I got this sound just with the reverb. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's a little bit of reverb. So, if I now bring out the bright control. You get a warmer, more kind of, you know, all round tone. Turn up the treble a little bit.
pretty snappy all around, very good strati tone, very sort of, um, I would say almost like LA-ish kind of polish kind of clean tone, leaning towards more about the F style tone to my ears than the M style or Vox style or whatever you want to call it. So let's go over to the next channel. Right, so this second channel, uh, now just exactly at the same as the Mark 1, you have two gain channels, but those channels also have a third mode, which is called the Plexi, in this amp. Uh, so which actually gives you three gain stages, just over two channels, and also you have a boost, which gives an additional gain stage. Now, the, the Plexi, if you activate the Plexi, then the channel 2 becomes the low gain Plexi kind of tone. And channel 3 becomes channel 2's normal gain level. If you deactivate the plexi, then channel 2 becomes the raunchy kind of hot rod the marshal. And the channel 3 kicks into you know, like really high saturation and the highest gain mode. And then on top of that you have the boost. The boost is not active in the plexi mode, but the other two modes, just to make that clear. Uh, so let's just try out the second channel now with gain around noon. And with the plexi engaged, so lower gain kind of thing. Some very, very light kind of early Brian Adams kind of tones to found in there. Uh, I like this for a sort of alternative clean kind of thing. Gives a little bit more meat and body and a little bit more compression than just using the clean channel as a clean. So good alternatives to be found there. Of course, if I used a humbucker guitar, you could push this harder. So let's put up the gain to max on the plexi and lower the volume a little bit to compensate. Very twangy, kind of stringy gain, especially with the strut. A bit more boomy than the channel 2 without the plexi because adding that much gain also brings up the bass a little bit. So let's back off the gain a bit and let's disengage the plexi. So now we're in the second channel normal gain uh, kind of thing with the plexi disengaged. So it's sort of the same gain level as we just had with the plexi maxed out but less bass and woof, tighter and more like top endy kind of thing. It's a lot more string and, and you know snap to it. So if you want that kind of gain level, I would suggest using this instead of maxing out the plex, unless you have a specific like a woolly vintage sound in, in mind, you know. So uh, when we come into this level, then the boost is also activated. So then we can just kick in that as well. So without the boost. And then with the boost. So a decent amount of gain added there with the boost. Then we also have this uh, open and uh, open switch, which is sort of that compression circuit that I discussed in the previous demo. And with it disengaged, uh, you hear that the level of the amp lowers. So it's more compressed and spongy. And if I press the open, it, you know, as the name suggests, it opens up gets fuller, a bit louder, more open and less, you know, compressed. So a nice thing to have. And then we have the low cut circuits. So yeah, 
if I then deactivate that, you will hear a lot more low end coming into the sound. <laughs> Which can be nice you now to fill out sort of a strat thing if you found the, this neck pickup to be kind of twangy then. You get a lot more meat in the low end by, you know, disengaging the low cut circuit. So that's one way to do that. Uh, of course, that's more useful and notable when using a humbucker guitar, LP style guitar in channel 3, which has a lot more gain, you know, on tap. So. But as a short overview of uh, the channel 2, and this, these are the EQ settings I used for the demo as well. So pretty much everything straight up sounds really good. Presence I was turned down a little bit uh, for my personal taste. So let's head on over to channel 3. All right then, for channel 3 I'm using a uh, single cut humbucker guitar, Fibonari, uh, just for more gain, saturation, and you know what that sounds like. Now on channel 3, let's start out with channel 3 in the plexi mode, which will bring it down to the normal gain level of channel 2. So just to see what that sounds like with this type of guitar. So gain at around 1 o'clock, plexi activated, and this is the kind of sound we get. <laughs> Really, you know, ACDC kind of touch sensitive. It's a real great rhythm sound uh, for that kind of thing. Uh, and now, if we do activate, deactivate the plexi, like so. We will have to compensate or bring the level down because there's a lot more gain on channel 3. The standard mode channel 3 is higher gain than the standard in channel 2. So. <laughs> chunky, fat, you know, high gain kind of th thing going on there. And of course, if we bring in the boost, it's going to be ridiculous amounts of gain. So let's try that. <laughs> Basically more gain than any normal human being would ever need. But still tight, defined, chunky. Uh, now this is with the low cut engage, which I would always have with this much gain. But it's a very, very good thing to have on an amp like this. So let's go back to the without the boost and uh, see what deactivating the low cut sounds like. <laughs> So if you use, uh, you know, the low cut uh, disengage, you should compensate by turning down the bass on the amp. So let's try that. <laughs> So it gives a different sort of low-end response. I prefer it without on the high gain. 
gives a chunky, you know, sort of late 80s, maybe super hot driven M style circuit. I really like that. So that's the high gain shell. Of course, you heard that on the lead as well in the in the demo. Uh, but there's a lot of different stuff in the amp, as, as we discussed in the intro as well, where you have the built-in cab sync, you have the line out, you have the DI out for reamping, you have an effect loop, and you have a pre effect loop. There's just tons of stuff in here. So let's just listen a little bit to the built-in cab sim as well. So for the built-in cab sim, as you can see, we have the EQ switch, uh, we have a distance and an angle switch, which is a different naming from the Mark 1, but makes a little bit more sense, I think, for this one. Uh, so we'll start with the EQ in the out position, which is the sort of more scooped kind of sound, and then try it with the in position, which is more mid-boosted kind of sound. So distance and angle pretty much straight up, a little bit of reverb in my DAW as well. <laughs> So a little bit more compressed than an IR, full range IR kind of thing, but a very, very usable sound, especially live for a big PA, this can sound really, really good. Uh, but let's just try tweaking the knobs a little bit, because the sweep of the like EQ filter is really, really wide. So let's start with the distance. <laughs> So turning to the left, it's like bringing the, the mic in towards the center cone, the distance of, of, from the center. Uh, so that brings in a lot more high end. And then back to the center. Which to my ears is sort of like a more sweet spot kind of thing where they, you know, edge of, edge of the uh, cap kind of thing. And going further out towards the cone edge then. Like so. So a lot darker, going further away from the you know center speaker. So let's go back to sort of the cap edge, and let's try the angle. So all counterclockwise. A bit, a little bit more the mic straight on, and then going back to 12 o'clock and bringing it further away, like to 3 o'clock. Brings it a little bit more high mid. Uh, in the sound, and then let's push the EQ out, then for the more mid boosted. It's a lot more like honkier kind of mid range tones as, as a filter. So, what I would do here, since there's a, a big gap like there, a disparity, I would then bring back the mids on the EQ. A little bit because of course the whole amp affects what's going through the circuit so the level if you raise the level of the channel you raise the level of the output of the cab sim circuit as well so that's i mean that's useful for new ramping and stuff and let's say i think that needs a little bit more top then instead of just eqing the amp which of course you could do you could just Dial the distance and dial the angle a little bit, like so, maybe. Let's see what that sounds like. Maybe a little bit much, like high end, like this. And maybe bring up a little bit of presence, back with treble, back with middle bit. Uh, 
reminds me of those like early late 80s uh, kind of Satrani tones uh, a lot of like upper mids so but it's a really useful circuit I've used this a lot live on the Mark 1 it sounds really really good for a PA especially you know combining it with a mic on stage or like a caps in like a Captor X with the IRs you can like fill out the sound and make it really sounds like there's multiple guitars in the mix while you're just you on stage so that's a really useful feature I think and it's also if you don't have access to these kind of things like fractal stuff or amp you know cab loaders or IR loaders or whatever just using this can give you a really really nice bass tone to start out with for reamping and just recording silently because it has that reactive load built in as well so it's really really flexible piece of kit especially in the studio and I mean you could basically just have this amp and get away with almost anything I would say and then speaking of the uh, DI uh, out uh, I want to demonstrate a reamping feature we know all of that works you record a clean signal at the same time as you record your original signal or whatever you want and then just be able to send it out from sound card back in through the front of the amp. I will mention that this amp has a separate transformer for the um, for the reamping circuit and a ground lit so it's silent, it's easy to work with, sounds really good. Uh, I'm not one that use reamping a lot, I try to just get the take, um, you know, as soon as possible and don't really you know mess with reamping that much but it's a good feature to have in case let's say I'm doing tracks for a like doing solos or rhythms or something for for someone else for another artist or another project then I can while I record my sort of my ideal finished guitar tone through the amp through my logic door or my you know fractal or whatever I can at the same time record a DI signal to send along as a stem to the producer or the mixer and I, then they have the option of reamping that themselves and going through plugins to make it fit the, the band mix or whatever but I can still send my file as sort of a this is what I would like to hear or this is my preferred tone so th there's a lot of possibilities and then I could of course use a cab sim tone as well you know if I find that to sit really well in that mix I could record that at the same time as well so so that's it for this demo uh, on the Suta Mark II LA25 fantastic amp uh, just as the Mark I uh, hard, I'm hard pressed to pick a favorite between the two they sound a little bit different and I really dig both of the sounds uh, for more modern kind of stuff like metal and uh, you know down tune stuff I would use the Mark II for a more smoother kind of vintage hard rock kind of thing I would use the Mark I most likely but the Mark II is definitely the more capable and more usable uh, friendly user friendly kind of amp to have especially in the studio and I love having it rack mounted and being able to route all these things to my fractal stuff and just have everything integrated uh, really, really easy to use and everything on the front as well so it's just a, a breeze a joy to work with in that regard so so until next time next demo take care see you around